I might actually take that tank and maybe move the couch, maybe move my ATO reservoir, or, you know, this is my RO reservoir, might move it out of the way and just put it right next to this. I'm not 100% sure yet. All right, everybody, so today's video is going to be about the basement tank. All the equipment that I'm currently running on it, I am going to be adding another tank to this system. Um, and I just figured I'd show you everything that I have running at the moment in case you want to set up a little frag tank. So, real quick, the biggest equipment. This is the Deep Blue 30-gallon tank. Uh, it is the non-tempered. I drilled it. It's 24 by 24 by 12 are the measurements of the tank. And the sump is the ProClear Aquatics 4-in-1 sump that is uh, 36 inches long, 16 tall, 14 and a half inches front to back. Those are the big pieces of equipment. We will start at the top. So the only thing that I'm running in here is the basic overflow box that I got from eBay and two half inch uh, return nozzles that are running RFGs on them. So got two RFG nozzles there and I'm running one Jabo power head. Now this power head is really really nice. It's the, actually I'm going to show it to you right now. It's the SW2. This thing is absolutely completely tiny, super quiet, super silent. Very, very easy pump. I'm actually going to get another one, maybe even two. I got them on eBay for 30 bucks each. I mean, this thing is absolutely super tiny. It does have a little controller. Um, it does come with a pretty good long cord. You can see I just have it wrapped up in the back, and then it goes straight to the controller. And then you have your power wire that gets directly plugged in. This one actually doesn't have a power brick, which is why I really, really like it, because it's super simple to install and it's got a lot of power to it. I have it on the lowest setting. As you guys can see, the lowest setting. And it's shooting two feet across, and you can see it pulsing the Ophelia on the other side of the tank. So that's about a good 20 inches away, 22 inches away at the lowest setting, and it can uh, feel that burst. That's pretty good in my eyes. The lights, I am using the Wavepoint Retrofit. T5. It's the 4 bulb, 24 inch. This one I modified. I actually ordered two ballasts off BRS and made this a two channel. So I have two blue plus and two actinic bulbs. They're all ATI. I have actually, a, for this downstairs tank, I have the two actinics coming on at noon and they shut off at 10 p.m. And I have the blue bulbs come on at 3.30 and they shut off at 9.30. So there's a 10 hour photo period for Actinix and a six hour photo period for the Blue Plus. Uh, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that's the time. I don't know, I didn't do the math. I just, yeah, that's what it is. It's 10 to tw uh, 12 to 10 and 3.30 to 9.30. So that's it for the lights, the power heads and everything else. Now what we'll do is we'll go down below. So. Like I said before, this is the ProClear 4-in-1 sump. It's definitely um, oversized for this tank, but I already had plans on tying in another system down the road. So we will look at the uh, whole system. I am running the Bubble Magus Curve 5 skimmer. This is the one that I had upstairs running the 75 that I took out and cleaned, and I was actually going to throw it on eBay, but I'm glad I didn't get rid of it. I like this one. Uh, I did set the water level depth. It is at, I believe, six and a half inches. I can double check if you do have a question. But you can see this this height, whatever this height is at, it's running really, really good. Um, again, if you have the Bubble Magus Curve 5 skimmer and you're wondering what this water level is, um, just leave it in the comment section down below. I will measure it when this video is over. So, and then for now, I'm running the 200 micron sump socks. I like these, these are good. And you can see these are the silencers. Run a nice silent. Um, I'm going to be putting out a video pretty soon on the two sumps once I have the other one up and running. 
in the back there you can see I do have the Marine Pure 8 inch by 8 inch by 4 inch block and in the back section let's see so in the back section that is just the um, 1 inch by 8 by 8 I know that's not really equipment but I figured I'd show it to you since we're looking at the sump so again equipment 200, fil 200 micron sump socks Bubble Magus Curve 5 Protein Skimmer. I do have two heaters in the back there. They're 250 watt heater. They're Aquion Pros. You can see them in the back. I had to put two on this tank because it's in the basement and it's been getting really cold down here. And since it's it's in the cabinetry and it's just this concrete floor just makes everything cold. So for the winter time I had to put two heaters in there. So those are the 250 watt Aquion Pros. I love them. I've never had any any issues with them in the past. We'll come over here. You can see in the back there that is the JBJ Auto Top Off. Now I do run mine. Um, I think it's the B mode or no the A mode where you take you can see back here the standard float and then you flip this one upside down so when the water level drops it turns on. If for some reason this one goes bad and the water starts really filling up once this pumps up then it shuts the pump off. It's a secondary emergency backup. I, I, I think they're super important. Um, so you gotta have that. The pump that I'm running down there is awesome again. Is another JCOD pump. I have the box right here. I'm showing you guys the boxes in case you want to screenshot it. So this is the DCS 4000 return pump. There's some specs there, but you guys can look it up if you really want to. I have right now, I have it on the second light setting, and it's nice and quiet, it does its thing, it's putting out plenty of flow, so the total gallons in this system, exactly 44 gallons, so there's 20 gallons down here, and then after I put all the sand and rock in, there's 25 gallons up here, so it's 45 gallons total water volume, and that pump is, like I said, I'll show it to you, it is at the number two setting on it and it's running this sump just fine oh forgot to show you guys I have a little little pump down here just to get some water surface agitation down here I noticed since the sump is a big section and it's meant for a good amount of flow it's meant really for 300 gallon system so you would assume at 300 gallons there'd be lots of water flow flowing through here but since I don't have the other tank running yet, there's not a lot of water flow going through here. So this this was kind of like a, a dead spot. So I put this little Lifeguard Aquatics, it's uh, I think like 75 gallons per hour pump down there. And just sticking straight up in the air. And it's actually keeping the surface totally clean and moving. Aerates it, which I, uh, I like. So um, last but not least, I do have this little high door pump. I got these little high door pumps about two years ago. They're like 60 bucks, 40 bucks, something like that. I forget what they are at a store. Um, they're the little tiny high door, 180 gallon per hour pumps. And I actually got them at a store that was closing for $5 each. I think I saw them online for maybe like 35, 40 bucks. I could be wrong, but this is the high door, 180 gallon per hour pump. I love these for using on my reactors. I think they're absolutely perfect. Have them wide open. And I have that upstairs and downstairs. I think I have like five of these things. So I even use them for auto top-offs. As you can see down in there, I'm using it for an auto top-off pump as well. Same thing upstairs. It's a reactor pump and an auto top-off pump. I love it. I've had the auto top-off and reactor pump running upstairs for three years. And I clean it maybe twice a year. And it's working perfect. So, um... I have changed the reactor. It's now the BRS mini reactor. I like this reactor because the other one that I had was a top flow, which I really liked. Super easy to install and clean and do all that. But when you first put carbon in or Fosgard and you turn it on, even after you rinse it, you're going to get a little bit of residue. And with a top flow reactor, I couldn't catch that residue and get it out of the tank. So what I do is when I put fresh carbon in here, I pop this union off, put a little bucket under there, turn it on, I bleed out about the first gallon of water, and then hook it back up. This way I don't get all the 
carbon dust and the GFO dust and the Fosgard dust. I don't want it going into my display tank. As you can see here, I have a 90, and that 90 is aiming at the intake of the return pump. So that's it for the system. If you have any questions, if I forgot something, definitely leave it down in the comment section below. But as you guys can see here, everything is doing really good. Um, things are growing faster than I had expected, and I'm going to have to either add another tank down here, or actually take this one out and put the four footer in. I have a deep blue 45, which is four feet by 12 inches by 18 inches front to back. So I might just put that in this place, or I might actually take that tank and maybe move the couch, maybe move my ATO reservoir, or you know, this is my RO reservoir. Might move it out of the way and just put it right next to this. I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, I'd like to put it right next to it, but if anything, I'd like to have the four footer right here, but I don't know. I'm not in a rush because right now this tank is doing so well the way it's set up that I don't want to disturb it. Everything has been doing really, really good. I'm going to see if I can show you guys it's a little blurry, but you see all the white specks on the glass? Maybe this will help. You see all the white specks on the glass? See them? Those blurry specks? Look at them. Oh, there you go. You can kind of see them. Oh, you can see them on the... There you go. See them on the left side there? These are all tiny, itty-bitty little pods. Look at them. Scurrying all over the place. The, the glass has been covered for the past two weeks of so these little itty bitty pods and I don't even want to clean the glass I just want to let them do their thing look it's completely covered tank downstairs is doing really really well got a lot of stuff um, actually that I want to sell trade whatever the case may be um, oh and the auto top off tank this is just the regular five gallon Petco tank um, and that's it and you guys know me I'm not an apex dude this is how I roll I am going to be I did order some Wi-Fi um, plugs or Wi-Fi surge protectors they're not going to be for this here they're going to actually be for the lights because right now I'm running these dial timers which I've been using for years but um, once in a while they go off, a little off whack with the time, and they don't hold it correctly. So I'm going to just get rid of those and put the uh, Wi-Fi one in there. Um, I got a shout out to Murphy's Aquatics and Jay's Reef. Murphy's Aquatics has been telling me for months to get one. And then I saw Jay's Reef and the two of them talking combined just triggered something. And I said, okay, let me get them. So that will hopefully be... Uh, some new technology. That's about as big of a technology, technologically advanced as I get. So, uh, yeah, and the tang back there. This is that captive bred yellow tang. It's awesome. This guy is awesome. I'm not gonna name him. Not gonna name him. I know we were thinking about naming him, but not gonna name him. It's just Mr. Yellow Tang. That's all. And the tiger sand conch doing his thing. If you don't have one of these and you have a sand bed get one. This is a tiger sand conch. All day long, all he does is he moves every little piece of sand, spins it around and cleans it. But that's it. That's just a quick tank update, mostly equipment update. Again, if you have any questions, if I miss something, ask in the comment section below. And I will talk to you guys next time. And that's it. I'm done. Talk to you later.